Hello and welcome. We are with Hans Hugavos, the chairman of IASB. Hans, thank you so much for joining us. Why is IFR so exciting? We are excited uh, because India is, uh, there is a lot of momentum now in uh, India. Uh, the new NDS uh, will be issued uh, shortly uh, and made obligatory. Uh, and that means that India is making a big step forward uh, in the process of converging with uh, IFRS. That's nice for us. We like important countries like India uh, to be part of the family. It's even more important to India because it really helps to raise the uh, in international appeal of your uh, financial markets. Uh, the three things that will change once uh, uh, India ushers in this convergence era that we are talking about. Well, uh, the Indias will be much uh, closer to IFRS than current Indian uh, standards. There will be seven or eight uh, differences, but they are uh, small. The importance will be to make clear to the outside world that the, Indian, the uh, differences are small and that they are transitional. Because uh, foreign investors, they, they don't, don't look at detail. They just want to see, is this IFRS or not? IFRS, we know anything else we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important that uh, uh, if there are differences that they are uh, transitional. Uh, what is also very important is that currently Indian companies are allowed to voluntarily use IFRS, yes, yeah. that that remains. So that the, uh, the companies that are currently uh, in communicating with their foreign investors in terms of IFRS, that they can remain doing so. Uh, from the common investor's point of view, how will things change once uh, uh, you know, the IFRS regime kicks in? IFRS contains some uh, improvements uh, over um, uh, current Indian standards. Uh, for example, when a, um, a takeover has turned sour and has turned unprofitable, uh, you will have to clearly show that. That is not clear, uh, currently the case under uh, uh, Indian, uh, Indian standards. And obviously for foreign investors, the, the, the advantages are, are, are very clear. What are the three challenges that you see India facing as far as implementing this new regime is concerned? Well, companies will have to implement it in a relatively short uh, time. That's, mm -hmm. that's always uh, a painful uh, process and a costly uh, process. Uh, that's why you should keep the conversion as, as, as sh uh, uh, try to do it as quickly as, uh, as, as uh, possible. possible. Um, and um, that's why it's also important that companies that uh, are currently using IFRS that they don't have to use two standards to keep the costs low. Okay, understandability, comparability and clarity. Uh, will uh, the new regime bring all of that as far as uh, uh, you know, financial reporting is concerned? They will all improve. They will not be perfect because there are still differences with uh, IFRS, but it will be a vast improvement. India is not the only country who takes this route. Right. Also, China has not has decided not to immediately fully adopt IFRS, but to go through a period of convergence. So it's perfectly legitimate what uh, India is doing, uh, but it will contain some challenges. What are the lessons that India can learn from, uh, uh, you know, regions like the EU or perhaps even Japan uh, that have embraced IFRS? Well, Japan is a very good comparison. Japan has just like India the possibility for individual companies to use IFRS. Almost every week a Japanese company is deciding to do so. So it's very important that India keeps that possibility as well. Hans, how would you rate uh, India's efforts uh, uh, you know, towards convergence on a scale of 0 to 10? I would say an 8 and I hope it will be 10 in the near future. Alright, thank you so much for joining us. Okay.